Also this afternoon, this. The Oscars are going woke. The woke karate have found their way around to the Oscars. Directors are now being forced to hire more black, female or gay stars in order to win a gong. Academy bosses have today unveiled plans for 2025 in which films competing for the best picture will have to meet certain diversity criteria. It lays out the following areas where such groups need to be involved. So on-screen acting and storylines, including at least one of the lead actors or significant supporting actors, is from an underrepresented racial or ethnic group. I don't know how this is going to work. Uh, creative leadership positions, departmental heads and crew composition, paid apprenticeships, internships or training, and audience development from publicity and marketing to distribution. Can you do that? Can you really do that? Um, I saw somebody earlier tweeting. I think it was I'm trying to think who the actor was that said it. It's a bit like trying to, telling Picasso uh, what he could put in a painting. Is that really possible? Dominic Samuels is a political commentator. Afternoon to you, Dominic. Always good to have you on the program. Um, what are you making of this? Well, for me, I just kind of see this as yet another example of the complete lack of self-awareness that those in Hollywood and those on the left side of the spectrum have. Like, how can you not see this as completely patronizing? How can you not see this as this just cherry picking individuals that you think tick a certain box and then just pushing them forward in order to win an award? I think I'd understand if they were trying to appeal more to those from underprivileged backgrounds in terms of the working class etc i mean even that would be erring away from simply choosing the best person for the job yeah. but this is literally tokenism and isn't this something that those on the left side of the spectrum love to berate for example black conservatives for just cherry picking people in order to use them and that's exactly what they're doing i think it's completely ridiculous uh, completely patronizing and like you said, how exactly are you going to do this? It, it doesn't really make any sense to me. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I, 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 they're, they're thinking, and I was surprised, by the way, that this wasn't just about getting lots more non-white. I mean, they mentioned gay and uh, gay characters or gay people and females in this. I mean, the last time I looked, you know, it, Hollywood isn't short of gay people, I don't think. No, it really isn't. And it's not short of women either in their representation. I think this is just another example of pushing an overtly uh, political agenda onto their audience. And it's not going to go down well. People simply want to view the best films and simply want the best people to get the awards they deserve. They don't want political messaging continually shoved down their throats. And I think this is something that people just can't quite fathom, you know, if there is a talented black actor, you know, a talented LGBT actor, a talented female actor, actress, then of course they should, you know, be represented in films and on boards and things like that. But you can't force it um, in order to win an award. I just don't think this is productive at all. And imagine if you were um, a black actress or a black actor or someone from the LGBT community, wouldn't you be constantly thinking, Am I getting this position or am I winning this award simply on the basis of, you know, my sexual orientation or my race? Or am I getting this yeah. award and this recognition because I'm actually talented? And I think what you'll see is, you know, extremely um, ill-informed and entitled people being given these roles and given all this attention under the illusion that it's about talent when really it's simply about ticking a box. And I, I think it's quite frankly insulting. Yeah, and it's not as if, Black actors haven't won awards. I mean, Halle Berry won one, I think, supporting uh, award a little. Because I remember Whoopi Goldberg was presenting the Oscars that year and Halle Berry stood up there to accept it um, and kind of spoke as if she was the first black woman to ever win one. Um, and dear old Whoopi was standing on the sidelines or rolling her eyes. I think she said afterwards, thanks for breaking the glass ceiling, sister. I seem to remember that being the line afterwards. And because um, clearly that she wasn't the first black woman to have won an Oscar because it had been it had been, it happened before. And of course, it's not just about numbers, but this is this is going to make it incredibly difficult. If you are a writer, I mentioned that quote. it was Kirstie Alley that made the comment about can you imagine telling Picasso what he had to put in his paintings? I mean, this is if I had an idea, if you and I, Dominique, decided to, you know, we're going 
going to sketch up a great idea for a nice psychological thriller and it was going to shock the world of film and we spent a year writing it and suddenly at the end of it we realised we hadn't got all of these different characters in. I mean, you can't <laughs> tell creators, can you, how to, what to put or who to put. What if I don't want a gay character in my movie? Exactly. And what if it quite simply just doesn't fit the context of the film that you're making? This is another really important point that you've just raised. This is just another example of wanting to limit people's freedom of speech yeah. and people's freedom of expression. If someone wants to make a film and it doesn't tick, you know, one of your silly boxes, that shouldn't automatically disqualify a filmmaker or actors and actresses from receiving an award. It's just being purposefully controlling and restrictive all in the name of being woke. And I know in today's society, that seems to really mean something to people, but it quite frankly doesn't mean anything if you're not awarding people based on what they actually bring to the table and not just what they look like or whether or not they fill the box that you've created. It's just really, it's quite frightening actually, I'd say. Yeah, my new script, by the way, My Life as a White Man. Maybe Snoop Dogg could play me or something. That could be perhaps... <laughs> <laughs> that that would uh, that would tick the box. It might lose a little bit of its credibility, obviously, but um, m maybe that's the way to go. Dominique, always good to have you on. Thank you, Dominique Samuels, of course, the commentator um, on the what is clearly the nonsense of what is going on in Hollywood. I'm, I'm intrigued by the backlash of this because I sort of thought that what you might get. Hollywood being Hollywood is everybody rallying around saying, "No, this is absolutely right. It's completely right and proper." Um, and of course, it takes it beyond encouraging people to think outside the box. And, you know, there might well be situations where people over the years have just employed people because they're their mates or because they, you know, the kind of unconscious bias thing. You know, most of this is all cobblers, by the way. But, you know, you take my point. Um, and the other problem with films, as I think we discussed the other week, if you sit and make a, you know, when they first made the series of Line of Duty, I don't know what the the... the um, diversity makeup of the crew is of line of duty but let's say it's mostly white and then they suddenly get told we like this can you make a second series of this I mean, what tends to happen is that directors go okay well let's use the same team we used on the first one because it's a really good team they all love the show it's been a huge success why would we change that so it's quite hard sometimes to break that directors in hollywood tend to use the same editors they tend to know who they like as their cinematographer so they have favorites they're not going to say well i'm just going to pick that person because they're of a different color or a different sexuality i mean that's just going to be nonsense and it was interesting to see that hollywood didn't have what you might say would be the typical response which would have been wholesale screaming endorsement they kind of went a little bit the other way thankfully oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand you're listening to ian collins on talk radio